you love movies and movie discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am The Wiz, and I'm here today to review the 1973 comedy drama The Last Detail, starring Jack Nicholson, Otis Young, and Randy Quaid, directed by Hal Ashby. Now, I can go a number of ways to start this. Of course, it's Jack Nicholson week, so I could go Jack Nicholson. I could also go Hal Ashby, but really the only other movie I've seen of his is Harold and Maude, which I would recommend. That's a good movie. Both dark and lightly comedic. Oh, a theme that's going to happen for this one. But I want to start with Robert Town, and Robert Town is the screenwriter of this movie, and there's a reason why I'm going to discuss Robert Town. If you look at Robert Town's filmography, you probably would see a lot of good movies, some eh, movies... The thing that is very distinctive about him is one movie, and that is Chinatown. Chinatown, for the longest time, has been considered one of the best written screenplays of all time. I think some would debate it's Casablanca, others would probably debate it's uh, another movie entirely, but it's usually either Casablanca or it's Chinatown. So much so that a lot of screenwriting courses, a lot of classes that do screenwriting, use that as an example of incredible screenwriting. And they dissect the script in certain ways to discuss certain formulas and methods of doing excellent screenwriting. So now that we've got into it, let's get into my review of The Last Detail, directed by Hal Ashby. But before you do that, let's get into the plot. This film is about two naval officers, Billy Budisky, played by Jack Nicholson, and Mule Mulhall, played by Otis Young. They're given an assignment to take a sailor, Larry Meadows, who is played by Randy Quaid, who has been sentenced to eight years in a New Hampshire prison, which is the brig, and escort him from where they are at Norfolk all the way to New Hampshire to the brig. When they start realizing certain things about the kid and why he got his sentence, they decide, well, more Budinsky decides, but they both decide that they'll give him a final night in a town or some good times before he goes into the brig. All right, so we got into the plot, so let's get into my three points. And my th first point is, this is a warm character study set in dank, grim settings. It's funny that I mentioned Harold and Maude when discussing Hal Ashby, because this is very similar to Harold and Maude in one key thing. It is a pretty warm story that is set in some grim and dark places. The film lightly discusses the problems with Meadows and why he did what he did and why his sentence is a little extreme, but they don't dwell on it. So they take him out to get beers, they take him out to get laid, they take him out to have a general good time and all the settings that are in the movie are dark seedy corners they are brothels they are dive bars they are not great establishments in fact the only place that looks good is where probably the most fucked up thing happens in the movie it's a really interesting juxtaposition that shows in the movie where they're all having a good time they're laughing but they are in the darkest and seediest places in each town and yet it makes it feel warm and comfortable at times and there are times where they actually discuss what's going on with Meadows in the movie but they kind of leave it on the wayside I think that was like an interesting thing I noticed throughout the entire film how the places that they go the the nice looking places are where the most screwed up stuff happens but the warm stuff that happens are in dank dark seedy places where in most movies they would look at as bad places and my second point straddles the line between comedy and drama evenly though should have lean drama this film does a pretty good job of keeping it even keeled throughout where they go from a bit of drama here to then a bit of comedy and it kind of evenly points out and I think a lot of people like this about this movie and I do understand why my issue is I kind of wanted more to do with the kid and with how he is feeling and how screwed up the situation is and they do talk about it here and there and they do discuss it and show it throughout the entire movie but I think they should have leaned a little bit more into it I was expecting a little more of an emotional heft when it came to that aspect of the movie. Does it necessarily make it bad? No, but it's kind of a disappointing thing in the movie. I will probably get to why they probably didn't do that and the argument that maybe some would take with this viewpoint. But what I will say is I was expecting a little more emotion from this movie that just wasn't there. And I found it a little disappointing, though it's not necessarily bad. 
And my third point, Randy Quaid gives a surprisingly good performance. Both Young and Nicholson do good jobs in this movie, but they are the typical, one's the bad guy, one's the uptight guy, and they kind of coalesce into what they have to do. But Quaid's performance is surprisingly good. I'm used to Quaid in probably his more outlandish roles, like Independence Day, not another teen movie, stuff like that. So I've never seen him do drama like this, and he does a really good job in this movie. The way I describe Quaid's performance as Meadows in this movie, he's not a bad kid. He's actually quite naive and not intelligent in the slightest. He has a blank expression throughout the entire time, but it's a blank expression that you know is just someone who doesn't know what he's doing, has no direction, and just doesn't know what to do. So he kind of just goes into his own impulses and it screws him up because going to your own impulses really means you're doing something that's probably against what society wants. And Quaid plays this kid very well. He really shows that in his face and in the mannerisms that he has in this movie. Okay, so I am no longer going to do this Who Is This For? Because I kept feeling like a lot of it was redundant or odd. I'm going to do another section called The Footnotes. And this is points that I wanted to make that I couldn't do on my three points. And my first footnote is how many films have been inspired by the last detail when i watched the film it reminded me of a lot of high school college movies where the popular cool kid feels bad for the nerdy outcast he's like let me show you the ropes young man and, and this kind of how it feels in this movie and i really wondered and there's probably movies that did this before I, I will say that but i really wonder if there's a lot of movies in the 80s and 90s that took the last detail and go you know let's take away this army thing and let's just make it about that kind of relationship and see how much that has inspired a lot of movies. I really wonder if there's other movies that really looked at this movie and went, huh, I could do that, but in this setting. And the other footnote I want to talk about is Mail Bond. I think a number of people are going to find my second point a little off base. It's because what I'm asking for is not what men do when they bond. They do stupid shit. They're very simple. They are emotionally adept people, but they are inept in spreading those emotions. But Esky and Mule, they feel bad for Meadow, but they still have to do a job. They are still masking that masculine role that they have in performing this duty while still trying to show a kid a good time and some mercy. But I think a lot of people probably see my second point and go, that, but that's just not how men are. And that's true. That's really not how men are. But I don't think they are that way when dealing with the job that they were dealing with as well. So that's an argument we can have, but I just want to state that as well. Overall, I do recommend The Last Detail. I did enjoy the film. It's definitely something that I enjoyed more as I got away from watching it. When I stopped the movie, I was like, that was good. But thinking about it more and more, it kind of grew on me a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. I think Quaid's performance is the best performance of the film. And I think the juxtaposition of having this very warm and funny character study set in all these dark, grim, dank places was interesting. But again, it seems to be kind of a thing that Hal Ashby does. Overall, I do recommend The Last Detail. Check it out on Tubi, I think I saw it on. I think that's where I watched it. So check it out on there if you have not seen it. It's a good movie. I recommend it. Now, if you want my full review on this movie, you can go to my website at, at IamTheWiz.com. You'll have my full written review right on the site, along with a link to the video that has this review that you've just listened to. All right, so Thursday is the 007 Debriefings with Zero, and we're going to do the first Timothy Dalton movie, which is The Living Daylight. Saturday, I'm going to be reviewing for Jack Nicholson Week, Five Easy Pieces, directed by Bob Rafelson. And on Tuesday, I'm going to start the theme of watching Shakespearean adaptations. Now, there's a number we can go for. We can go straight adaptations, or we can go for movies that twist Shakespearean plays, which I will do on Saturday if no one makes a suggestion. I am a huge fan of Orson Welles, but I'm going to choose this one here, and this is Chimes at Midnight. I don't know much about it. I'm not a Shakespearean scholar, so I don't know all of his plays, so I'm curious to see how this turns out. And then what I'm going to do now as well, I'm not going to say what the next films are going to be as well, but the following week's theme as well, which is going to be the 29th, that theme will be Mexican filmmakers. So films made from Mexican filmmakers. So if you have a suggestion on that, let me know in the comments or email me at zerowizcast at gmail.com if there's something that you think I should see. So tune in Thursday where we're doing the double seven briefings with Zero, and that is The Living Daylights. Saturday, Five Easy Pieces, directed by... 
Bob Rafelson. And on Tuesday, Chimes at Midnight, directed by Orson Welles. I am The Wiz, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.